Behind me is a custom gaming setup that I built for a celebrity worth $12,000. Bro, that is so sick. Vetted today's video sponsor came in super clutch in getting the parts needed for this video. Vetted is a free browser extension that shows you price history and expert reviews on products right on Amazon so you can get the best deal. Upgrading your RAM, Vetted will show you the best one to buy. You can even filter into different price ranges. Vetted will also show you why they chose that product with reviews and notable awards from trusted sources. They also provide a recommendation score. You can even view a load of Reddit discussions about this brand's products to ensure you are making the right choice. My favorite feature is when they tell you if a product is on sale and you can see the price history to confirm whether you were scoring a great deal. Try it out for free using my link below. I mean, why wouldn't you want to save some hard earned money? So this is such a fun and unique case. This is the Cougar Gaming Gemini X. It has two compartments. You can lay it down flat or you can lay it vertically and you can fit two PCs inside if you wanted to. Now, from first look, it looks like the backside, it's compatible with ITX systems, whereas this is EA ATX at the front here. But we don't need to worry about that because as I said, we may even chuck in some bigger alpha cool radiators in the backside to get even extra cooling for this system. We've had this project in the plan since I believe September before Z790 was released. So we have a Z690 Aorus Master. I know what you're thinking, it's last generation. However, we have upgraded the BIOS and we're going to be throwing in our very own 13900K to make sure this system is fully up to date and performing at its best. Now, as much as I hate letting go of our 13900K because it's our only one we have on hand, I think this build deserves it and I think that the celebrity deserves it. I couldn't bear giving them something that's not the best of the best. So we're going to throw this in the system with a total of 24 cores, 32 threads, and a max turbo boost of 5.8 gigahertz. This CPU is really going to perform nicely in the system. This kind of makes me jealous. I really need to upgrade my personal system. These are the Aorus Gen 5 uh, memory sticks. They're quite plain. I was actually hoping for some RGB ones. However, these will not take away from the build because they're such a nice, clean design, a very neutral color scheme with the all black sort of heat sinks. These are 5200 megahertz CL40 timings. We also managed to score him this Aorus Gen 4 7000 series SSD. It is one terabyte in capacity, so it's going to get him off and running. So he'll be able to install a few of his favorite games on this. And if he needs to expand, as I said, the motherboard has five NVMe slots. This particular SSD has 7,000 megabytes read and 5,500 megabytes per second write. Our motherboard currently already has its own heatsink, so there's no need for this one. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it from our storage device. All right, so we'll go ahead and remove the heatsink or what's that called? The Thermal Guard 3. Once again, the unboxing scissors, getting another workout. Can't get in this one. I, I don't want to damage the box in any way. <laughs> so this is the AlphaCool XPX Aurora Edge Plexi Digital RGB CPU block, and for some reason I can't get it out. So it does have integrated RGB. It's going to fit on our 1700 socket. The only thing that I think maybe AlphaCool should consider, unless they do have some sort of bridge, is they should use the uh, standard three pin headers for the RGB, or at least have some sort of converter to it. But nonetheless, this is a great performing CPU block. We actually used it on the Predator build as well. Next is the CPU block, but remove the protective film. And that's how you install an alpha cool CPU block. So before we customize anything, I really wanna see what everything looks like in this case so I can actually plan out the water cooling loop. I'm also worried about how far out the graphics card is gonna stick out and as to whether we can get the glass panel back on or not. If not, then we're gonna to have to come up with a different solution there and we've got plenty of acrylic, so we'll make something work. So for those of you who watch the channel, you'll know I absolutely love Leon Lee's fans because they connect together and make it super easy for cable management. There is only one cable coming off of these fans that plugs into the RGB controller. So I've 
super happy about using these in the build. I mean, the whole goal is to keep this nice and clean. And I also went with the SL Infinities rather than the original SLs because these ones not only have RGB Infinity lighting on the outside, but it's also got RGB on the inside. And that's actually going to add to the theme a bit because in order to achieve the look that we're after, we're going to need some lighting from somewhere. So the particular case we're using is quite unique and it has multiple spots for 240 millimeter radios. So our coolers came in clutch with their full copper 240 millimeter radiators and all of the water cooling gear for this particular build. Now we're gonna have plenty of spots to mount a bunch of these, which is going to make up for a lot of cooling. So Gigabyte really hooked us up here. It's a funny story because with all the planning starting back in September, the 4090 actually wasn't around at the time. And so we actually had the 3090 Ti on hand and they actually came in super clutch in changing it around to a 4090 to make sure that we had only the best parts to give this to the celebrity. So we have the RTX 4090 gaming OC from Gigabyte. And now for the graphics card fit test. As you guys can see here, it is sticking out ever so slightly. We've got about a centimeter overhang. I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna do here, apart from perhaps vertically mounting the GPU, which would theoretically solve our issue. I really wish companies would reduce the size of these graphics cards, but I understand they're getting hotter and hotter and they require beefier heat sinks. So we had to get the best of the best power supply for the system, especially with all of the high-end parts that we have. So we went with the Be Quiet Dark Power 13 1000 watt power supply. This is a titanium rated power supply and I need my unboxing scissors again <laughs> for this one. This is also one of their higher end power supplies and it has very, very silent operation with the particular fans and technology that they have built into this. I also love that it doesn't look gimmicky. It's just nice and plain and simple. So I I think this is going to work really well for powering all of our high-end components. Okay, it kind of looks like we're forced to go with the fan up anyway because of the mounting position of the screw holes. None of them lined up the other way, so we have to go in this way, but that is okay. So we'll get this all screwed in and we'll see how much room we have left to fit some extra radiators and things like that in. So for the back section to make more room for the extra water cooling gear that we plan to put in, we're not going to be using an SFX power supply. We've already got our full power supply in, so we can remove that bracket. We're also not gonna be installing a second GPU at the back, so we can remove that and we're not going to be using any extra storage. All of that can go inside the motherboard because NVMe drives are obviously faster than SATA. So we'll remove that as well. That'll free up a lot of room and we still have to fit the reservoir in as well. So far, I'm thinking we may be able to scrape in two 360 millimeter radiators. If not, two 240s should fit. So we've made a couple of changes since starting. What we've done here is we've removed the 240 millimeter radiator, which goes down the bottom because I want the tubes to come straight out of the CPU block and down under and then through into the second compartment at the back. The other thing we've changed is we've added a 360 millimeter radiator at the back here. You guys just saw me creating the mounting holes. So we've got that installed now. So that means for the cooling, we've got the 360 plus the 240. It's gonna be plenty just for the CPU. This reservoir is from AlphaCool. Again, AlphaCool, big thank you for coming in clutch and helping us out with this build. And I am going to need to add a D5 pump to this, it looks like, but I absolutely love the design of this, but it does have three ports up the top for filling. It's also got the in and out down the bottom, but I don't have to use the inlet down the bottom if I don't want to. I can have it coming in the top. So that's one thing to think about. It also has integrated RGB. Again, it doesn't have the usual three pin header, but it will connect to one of AlphaCool's controllers. So we're gonna make sure we have one of those. Onto the reservoir, we're gonna have to make some custom mounting for this inside the case. But before that, we need to install our pump.
So the holes are drilled and I strategically place them in that position because we have a little cutout here in the motherboard tray so that I can put the RGB cable through this hole, line it up, and I can also bring the pump cable up and through that hole as well and down underneath. So it makes for clean cable management. So let's get this screwed in. So we finished creating the window and the laser cutter and then we started using tin foil, rolling it up and creating these tentacles which kind of represent the upside down gate in Stranger Things. And what we're gonna do now is figure out what we're going to cover all of the foil with to give it a good texture before we paint. Let's get into it. So while the paint is drying, let's get started with the setup. First things first, let's move the desk into place. For our monitors, we have not one, but three M27 QP gaming monitors from Gigabyte. 165 hertz, 1440p display with built-in AVM, and it is also an IPS panel, so you know that those colors are gonna be very accurate. So let's get it unboxed, and let's get it on the wall. Oh, look at that. That looks amazing. Look what just arrived. Is there anything in it? You may be wondering, how many grams does it weigh? One thousand three hundred and fifty. This is our brand new chair, the Herman Miller Bantam, black on black. You could get white on black. You could get red on black. And of course the black on black. <laughs> this chair, can I help you? This chair is fully adjustable. We could go side to side, back and forth, up, down. It's also got some lean to it. Actually, I, I quite like it like this more. If you want to adjust the back, you could turn this a few times, makes it a lot more stiffer so it just doesn't go all the way back. Or you could just make it like all the way tight and then it'll barely move at all. There's a lot of resistance against it. Now, if we undo this, make it go all the way back. Now, on the other side, we have this wheel here. Now, by turning that, it locks it in place. But I like to swing. So also with this chair, we have an adjustable headrest. So you could go up, and down. Also at the back of the chair, we have the back lumbar or thoracic support. So by turning these wheels, you can loosen it so that it's not pushing up against it as much, or you can tighten it, which pushes it against your back thoracic and lumbar to give you extra support, which I think is pretty cool. Not only that, it also has support up the top here as well, and this pad here too. Now, my personal favorite thing about this chair is that it's not the gamer leather that all those gaming chairs use. We actually have breathable material, so you can actually see right through this, which is great, especially for the Australian summer. And of course, the chair as well. It's nice padding, but it's breathable material. So, you know, I ain't gonna get too much ass sweat in this chair. Hello. So guys, if you're interested in checking out the Herman Miller chairs, I'll leave a link in the video description. Well, that's the jankiest thing that I've ever seen, but it's gonna work. We've actually left some screws poking out because it's gonna help to glue the clouds onto them and get them stuck on top. So that's the plan anyway. I have to drill a hole though for the LED power. That's gonna be at the top left corner. Let's go ahead and do that. So when you think of lightning, you do not think straight lines. So we're gonna try and zigzag it all the way. We've got a few five meter strips. I think we'll probably use three, and I think that'll give the best look. They have a double-sided adhesive on the back, so it should stick to the roof. Then we can go ahead and put the clouds all over it. Yeah. 
You know, I like your idea about the whole sort of music levels thing with the tiles. I think it's gonna look pretty cool. Hang on, let me just put this last tile on. So what we plan on doing is having LED strip behind the desk and the monitors, which should light up this top half. And then we're actually gonna put two tube lights down below, which will highlight in amongst all of these patterns here. I think that'll look pretty sick. And Amelia came up with the idea to have the different levels. I think it turned out really nice, especially when we moved the desk in, so. I think we better continue on with the setup. Got to put some shelves on the wall, if I could get it out of the bag. This on there, two of them with wood slots in like that. It's putting holes in the wall. Look at that bubble, it's right in the middle. Wait, did we show putting it on? So this is how we attach it, boom. Next, we have our Stranger Things metal posters from Display. Now, you can get these in medium, large, or extra large. As I said, they are metal posters as well, and you could also get them with a frame around them. But we chose to go frameless for this setup. They have loads of different themes to choose from, and obviously, we went with Stranger Things theme for this setup. Now, you can get these in all different type of finishes. You can get matte and gloss, and a whole different load of frame types as well. Now, they have over 1.5 million artworks. And these ones are some of my favorites. Hey guys, for every display sold, display actually plants one tree, which I think is really cool. Oh, that looks sick. Look, you've got the, the gate, the, the down under gate down there. <laughs> Wow, that looks amazing. You've got the upside down gate right there. We've got the clouds in the sky, matches beautifully with the setup. And we've got not one, but two of these to put on the wall. Simple mounting as well, which I really love about these. Now, Display actually uses real genuine artists for all of their uh, artworks as well that they're selling. This looks absolutely amazing. Now, this is kind of what we're going for with our clouds up there. You've got the, the lightning going all through it, the darkness, I love it. So both of these posters are gonna go up on the wall. Stick the magnet here, press hard for at least five seconds. Oh, that's sick. It's even like signed on the back by the artist. That's awesome. Product authenticity. So it, it's got like a hologram tag on the back too. That's cool. Shelves are done and completely level. Now it's time to wipe down the surface for the disc plates. That sticks pretty good. So I'll just put that about there. Now, this should. Hey, at least we could just peel it off whenever we want. So it's, it's like impossible to put this on the wall sideways. Like you could always fix it. That's cool. That looks sick. That looks awesome. Nice. Let's get the other one on. That one right there. Display also delivers worldwide in only four to five business days. Guys, if you're interested, you could use my link in the video description or use code IFR at checkout to get 20% off one or two displays or 30% off for three or more. So I wanna add a colo light strip behind all of these figurines to give them a bit of highlight on the wall. I've actually drilled four holes, one at each end so that I can route the strip behind the wall in this gap here and bring it back out so I don't have to cut this one in half or use, or buy two strips for that mouse. So I'm saving a bit of money there. Let's go ahead and install it. Now I've got a bunch of these Colo Light triangle kits to put on the wall. As you can see, we've started here. Our plan is to actually come right around and down on each side. So let's go ahead and get these installed. For the peripherals, we have the Scuff gaming controller and we've actually customized that for a more retro theme since Stranger Things is based in the 1980s. Of course, we then have the M65 RGB wireless mice from Corsair. This is wireless, so we're gonna save on a bit of cables going over the desk, which is always awesome. Then we have the K100 RGB optical mechanical keyboard, which is gonna be pretty cool. It's also a little bit unique with all of the knobs and stuff up the top. I think that fits the retro vibe a bit more, even though it's not technically retro. Next, we have the Wave 3 mic with the pop filter, and this has some really nice clarity in it. We actually use it in our personal setup behind us, so we cannot wait to put this in the setup as well. And then, of course, we have our face cam at the end there, which will go on top of the middle monitor, and we'll be able to do live streams from it. We've got two sets that we'll be able to use, so this will be awesome. So let's get them into the setup. So 
because all of our lighting in the setup is from Colo Light, I wanted one controller to control it all. Not only can it can control the lighting, you can actually map shortcuts and different macros to this device. So let's go ahead and get it installed. I can even use it to turn the PC on. So to have full control of the Colo Play, we have to download the desktop app. Now, when you first plug the controller in, you need to make your way through all of the various settings, such as the language and your time zone. Now, once the Colo Play is set up, you have a various amount of different clocks with different design styles on them. So you can pick whichever one you like, or we can get further into it and set up our PC. Now to change screens, we need to tap and hold this until the pause button shows up, and then we can use the dial to go to the side. Now to get our PC set up, if you go to this screen, this is the PC switch, so you can turn it on and off. Now for the rest of the PC setup, we can actually display PC info such as CPU, GPU, and RAM temperatures and utilization. All we have to do is click send, which sends the results to our controller, and then they will be displaying on the screen. Let me show you. So right here, the dashboard is displaying the CPU, running at around 7% utilization at 22 degrees. If we press the middle button, we can go down to the GPU, which is at 18 degrees Celsius. And then of course, we can look at our RAM utilization. Then we could go to our network speeds. Of course, we're not using the internet at the moment so it's not really showing any upload or download then back to the CPU. Now this is the awesome feature that I think people are going to love about the Colo Play and something that I'm going to be utilizing a lot. You can actually map out different keys on here so you have different macros and there is four layers with three of them already preset but you can change them. So all you have to do is click for example the mute then you can record whatever you like or you can choose a pre-selected Windows option or of course you can choose a media key. Now this is where you can access the those keypads and media keys. Now I haven't actually mapped any keys myself personally yet, but I'll get that set up. And of course we have built-in games. Let's see how we go. It actually records your, oh, okay. So we're, we're out. But it does record the high score as well. Now this next tab is called Colo Inspire. It pretty much just gives you different quotes to help inspire you for the day. So you can just keep clicking the middle button and it'll give you new ones. Now this next tab is super exciting. This is where you can control your lights. As you can see here, we've got all the different tabs. This controls different lighting effects. And you can also control brightness just by turning the dial. So we can go all the way down and we can go all the way up. This is a really cool feature that I love that they implemented into the Colo. Colo Play. Now by pressing the button at the back of the Colo Play, you could actually go and exit to settings. And one thing I recommend doing before you start playing around with the machine is going to the about section and make sure that you are in the latest version. Now this is a fairly new product and they are trying to bring out a lot more features. So by making sure that you're in the current latest version, you'll have access to all of those features. So guys, I know this is a fairly new product that a lot of you probably haven't heard about. So I'll leave a link in the video description if you want to check it out further. But I cannot wait until Colo Play implements even more features. It's going to be sick. And the last piece of the puzzle, our 17Z90Q LG Cram laptop. Now because we're always on the move about, we wanted to get a lightweight laptop top that we could include in the setup so that we could upload anything from our PC to the laptop that we need for work. Now this is a 2560 by 1600 anti-glare display. It is an IPS panel and 2560 by 1600 is actually an aspect ratio of 16 by 10 instead of 16 by 9. So there's more screen real estate, which I thought was pretty useful. Now for the specs, we have a 12th gen Intel Core i7 processor with DDR5 memory. We also have a Gen 4 NVMe drive inside. So we have really fast read and write speeds for our transfers between the PC and the laptop. We also have Wi-Fi 6E so we can reach speeds faster than Wi-Fi 5 or 2.4 gigahertz network. Now when we're on the go, we do have to attend a lot of meetings. So we do have the built-in webcam, which is now full HD. On the sides, we've got two USB ports and a micro SD card slot. There's a HDMI port on this side and two USB type C ports with Thunderbolt 4 for transfer speeds up to 40 gigabytes per second. And the ports actually feature up to 15 watts for charging external devices. Now through my daily uses of using this and watching YouTube videos and and videos in general. We've gotten about 17.5 hours of battery life out of this, which I think is really good for a laptop that is not plugged in. And the laptop is actually made out of a military grade magnesium alloy. And that's commonly used in aircrafts, making it stronger, lighter, and more durable. I'll leave a link in the video description if you wanna check it out further. So for the shelves, we've got a couple of characters. Make sure he stands up got this guy here and of course we've got her and also built this cool little arcade machine which I thought looked absolutely awesome 
uh, Stranger Things themed as well, so we'll chuck that up there too. On the second shelf, we have a couple more characters. This guy looks creepy. And of course, it wouldn't be a Stranger Things themed setup without the Welcome to Hawkins sign. I might actually make something to hold it up so that I could sit it about here rather than all the way at the back. So I don't know how well you guys can see it, but there is a bit of a natural slant to the GPU because of how heavy it is. So we want to try and prop that up with this demo gorgon that we laser etched out. This is a bit of a GPU prop that we made, so we'll go ahead and put that underneath. And would you look at that? That is much better. This PC was built for NFL superstar, Miles Garrett. Bro, we really enjoyed working with you and the team, and we hope you enjoy your brand new PC. Let's check it out.